I'm Michael West, Technical Product Manager with VMware. vSphere with Tanzu now includes fully supported load balancing of Kubernetes clusters and Kubernetes load balancer services through the NSX Advanced Load Balancer Essentials. This load balancer is externally deployed and does not require NSX software-defined networking. The focus of this video is the load balancer setup and configuration of vSphere with Tanzu. It begins with the deployment of the NSX Advanced Load Balancer Controller Appliance and configuration of the networking through the UI. Through vCenter, the VI admin configures and deploys the supervisor Kubernetes cluster onto an existing vSphere cluster. As the supervisor cluster is configured, a virtual service and virtual IP are created in the controller. Service engine VMs are spun up and connected to the VIP network previously configured. These engines handle the routing of traffic through the load balancer VIP to the nodes of the Kubernetes clusters and Kubernetes services of type load balancer. DevOps teams are now ready to deploy on-demand Kubernetes clusters. They use the VIP to log into the supervisor cluster and submit a declarative YAML specification that defines the desired cluster configurations. The TKG service deploys the clusters, including interaction with NSX ALB controller, to orchestrate the creation of load balancer VIPs for those clusters. Now developers are ready to deploy applications onto the new clusters via standard Kubernetes specifications. Applications that include Kubernetes load balancer services are reconciled by a TKG service controller to provide ingress into the cluster and expose that service externally. Okay, let's see how to set this up. We will start by deploying the NSX ALB controller appliance and giving it an IP on our management network. Once the appliance boots, we log in to continue the setup. We add DNS, backup, and NTP information. The controller needs to know how to connect to vCenter, and that information is provided here. Select the management port group, the IP subnet, and the range of IPs in that subnet that can be used to connect the service engine VMs. We continue in the controller appliance and need to either import a certificate or create a self-signed cert for use in supervisor cluster communication. The next step is to configure the data network. The load balancer VIPs will be assigned to service engines from this network. These VIPs are the interfaces that connect users to clusters and Kubernetes services. After selecting the port group, we specify the IP subnet associated with that port group, then create an IP address pool. The pool is a subset of the network and represents the range of available IPs to be assigned as VIPs. Because service engines do not have interfaces on the workload network that Kubernetes cluster nodes are connected to, there must be a route defined that specifies the gateway to use to get there. Remember that VIPs are on a network accessible to the client, but the workload network may not be. So these routes enable traffic to get to the clusters. In this example, the workload network is 192.168.120.0, and the service engine will use the VIP network gateway. We have set up the VIP network called VDS Primary Front End, but we need to tell the controller to use that network to allocate VIPs. This is done by first creating an IPAM profile that uses the network to assign the virtual IPs. Once you've created the IPAM profile, you must assign it to the VMware default cloud. Your load balancer setup is complete. Now we will enable the supervisor cluster. Your vCenter has already been selected. We do not have NSX software-defined networking registered with vCenter, so vCenter server networking is selected. Next, we choose the vSphere cluster on which to enable the supervisor cluster. 
The cluster control plane node VMs can be deployed with different resource configurations. The selected storage policy defines the data stores where the control plane nodes can be placed. Now we get to the load balancer. We give it a name and choose our NSX Advanced Load Balancer, also known as Avi Load Balancer. Enter the management IP and port for the controller, along with its username, password, and certificate. The management network is used for the supervisor nodes to communicate with vCenter and with the NSX load balancer controller. Choose a port group and the starting IP for the list of five IPs that will be used in the configuration. The workload networks connect the TKG and supervisor cluster nodes and are routed through the load balancer VIPs. This is the same network you created the static route for in the load balancer setup. Here we are choosing the port group, subnet, and a subnet range on this network. And finally, we choose the content library that contains base images for the Kubernetes node VMs that will be deployed. In just a few minutes, we have a running supervisor cluster whose nodes are connected to the management network and the workload network. A virtual IP has been allocated for external access to the cluster. A service engine VM has been created and is connected to the VIP network to route all supervisor traffic to the appropriate nodes. Back in the controller, we can see that a virtual service has been created with a VIP and ports assigned. Fully supported and integrated load balancing in vSphere with Tanzu.